We're listening to part of the final movement of Tchaikovsky's Symphony No. 5, played by the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra National Youth Orchestra on Friday night at the Michael Fowler Centre under conductor Richard Gill. Uh, that was the first performance of this year's finest orchestra with kids from around the country. Rachel Hyde was there to enjoy it and joins us now. Welcome, Rachel. Hi. Talk to me about uh, the National Youth Orchestra and the way they came together under Richard Gill. Well, you just have to love any youth orchestra, to be frank, but a national youth orchestra is something very special. Of course, it's the country's best musicians. They've been chosen because they're at the top of their game um, and they want to be there. I think that's one of the things that's most tangible whenever you go and hear the National Youth Orchestra of New Zealand is how desperately they all want to be in that orchestra playing this repertoire. And it comes through every time, every year when we hear them play, every critic across the country says, aren't they just amazing? And it's true, I think there's no other way of putting it. They just play music with the greatest passion to the highest possible standard. And you just don't get that very often, no matter what orchestra you hear. No, that's you don't right. get that sense of commitment and that sense of drive. And what's particularly brilliant about this program is that they were playing Tchaikovsky and there's something about youth orchestras playing Tchaikovsky that is unlike any other musical performance you hear and I remember playing Tchaikovsky 5 I've played it in every youth orchestra I ever played in I think and it follows you throughout your life as a, as a musician you start when you're 10 or 11 or 12 playing it in youth orchestras and then you're still playing it 40 years later as a professional musician and and it changes the way you approach the music changes but the first time you come to it as a young musician you've got so much in intensity so much passion and you've also got the stamina for it which is you really need for this music Tchaikovsky 5 is so exhausting to play and by the time you get to the end of it your arms are aching your lips are blown you're emotionally drained and there's something about young musicians that mean they've just got that little bit of extra energy to throw at that last movement and it makes it sound triumphant rather than the pathos that you often get with Tchaikovsky you, you get the happy side of it the joyful side of his conversation um, Tchaikovsky has intensity in his music but he does have joy as well and, and hope in there and that's what you get from the young musicians in Tchaikovsky that you don't necessarily get from the seasoned pros and that just came through in, in bucket loads on a Friday night it was just it shimmered and it shone with joy and passion and belief and also I think sometimes you hear with youth orchestras just the absolute surprise oh my god isn't it amazing being in a symphony orchestra and I think you hear that with youth orchestras and it comes through particularly in Tchaikovsky because it's such great music to play everybody every section of the orchestra has something incredible to do and it just makes the music come to life. It's fantastic. Right, well, before we get to the fantastic second half, we must talk about the first half of the programme, Rachel. We started with a new work, um, a commission from a young a composer in residence, I think, with the NYO. Sam, Sam Logan? Yes, Sam Logan. He's a, he's a young composer. He studied at the um, School of Music. Uh, it was a short opening piece. I think it was about seven minutes, but he packed a lot into that seven minutes. It was classically filmic, I would say, very programmatic. It was about gods fighting in, in the sky and then tumbling down to earth and one is triumphant and the other skulks off. And, and you heard that programme in the music. There was lots of sharp stabs and punches and lots of percussive texture in there, which you hear in film music a lot. Um, and he used that to really characterise this battle that, that was going on in the heavens. And that was very effective. Um, I, th I thought that there was a little bit too much repetition for me sometimes in, in the percussion use particularly. I was just looking for a little bit more inventiveness. But considering he had a really massive orchestra and the obvious limitations that you have using young musicians who aren't necessarily um, as adept at interpreting new music as professional musicians might be, uh, I actually thought he delivered quite a good piece. And the orchestra, they really matched up to it. It's not easy music and there was an awful lot of notes in there. Uh, and they did very well. And I think it was particularly hard opening with that piece and then having to turn around 180 degrees and play Beethoven afterwards. That's quite a, a big shift for any musician. Um, and so it was, it was a big ask getting them to do the Logan and then the Beethoven. And they threw themselves into the Logan and, and gave him a good performance. And he looked thrilled when he came up on stage afterwards. He looked absolutely but delighted, didn't he? It's one of the best things is watching young composers come on after their piece has been premiered and there's a big grin on their face. And I, I did that. <laughs> so that was really enjoyable. And then, then, of course, they had to step up and play Beethoven afterwards. Right. Now, um, do you want to talk about uh, the young soloist, Lara Melda, or should we hear her first, Rachel? Let's hear her first, shall okay. we? We've got the uh, part of the slow movement, I think. 
pianist Lara Melder playing with the National Youth Orchestra on Friday night, uh, the Beethoven's third con- piano concerto. That was the, the second movement. Uh, Rachel, can you describe Lara f- Laura's performance from your perspective? I thought it was outstanding. It was really beautiful playing. Uh, she plays with poise, dignity, charm, wit, uh, all, all the things that had never really struck me about this piece. Uh, for me, it's a strong piece. You need to be a strong performer to play it. But she turned it into young ladies' music. She claimed it as her own and, and filled it with, with beauty. And, and I think charm was the word that really came out for me. I just was engaged all the way through. I wanted to listen to what she had to say about the music. It wasn't just a performance of notes. It was a real, genuine interpretation from the mind of a brilliant young lady musician. And it was a winning performance for me. And I, and I really hope that the members of the youth orchestra felt that as well, that they really communicated with her and enjoyed what she brought to this piece of, you know, cornerstone piece of repertoire and gave them a sense that, that there was more to be said about music, that you can always reinterpret a piece and make it your own if, if you believe in it enough. And she was really fantastic. I hope she has a, a brilliant career because she's an, a really amazing young musician. Yeah, just an incredible talent, um, beautiful. Um, and also hard work for the orchestra as well, you know. There's a lot to be thinking about in Beethoven. Yeah, and accompaniment is a vital skill for all young musicians to learn. It's not easy. It's not easy to sit behind a soloist and um, accompany them and not really bring your own personality fully into the piece. And this is where it helps having someone like Richard Gill leading the orchestra, who's just such an amazing musician. He's not just a great educator, he's an amazing musician, full stop. And you heard that in in every piece in the concert, but particularly in the Beethoven to guide the orchestra behind Lara all the way through the piece. Um, The balance was always pristine. She was never overpowered. She didn't have to force the sound at all. But then when there were moments of solo importance for the orchestra, he really let them sing. And and so did she. And we just heard it in the passage we were listening to. Um, She had accompanying arpeggios underneath the orchestra. And there were wind solos going on behind, solo bassoon, for instance. And she listened to them and she went with them and let them have their moment, but was still very present as the soloist. And then when it was her turn, she stepped up to the plate and let let the song sing out again. And it was really, really perfect accompaniment and solo partnership going on between the orchestra and her. And this is, again, it's something for young young musicians to learn that sometimes it's about somebody else. But you also have to know when to raise your head and say, actually, my turn now. Beethoven gave me a great melody here and then disappear back into the shadows again and let the soloist have her moment. They all did it very, very well. Rachel Hyde reviewing Friday night's uh, performance by the National Youth Orchestra, NZSO National Youth Orchestra, with Richard Gill in charge. We're going to play a bit more of Tchaikovsky now. Anything you want to say about the way they approach this um, work, Rachel? Oh, they just approached it like young people. It was... It was actually it was never brash. That's what it never was. Richard Gill knows how to pace a piece. He never um, let them overblow so that they did still have the energy and stamina at the end. But there's also real delicacy and and those quiet, intimate moments of passion in the second movement and wit in the third movement. And one of the things that I really enjoy with good youth music is the communication between the players. And I think that really helped this performance on Friday night, you could see the string section leaders talking to each other across the orchestra. You could, you witnessed Richard Gill giving um, Louis van der Mespel at the front of the double bass section the biggest grins when the basses did something well. There was this, always this communication across the orchestra which lifts the piece. It gives it that extra pizzazz, really, an extra sense of the live performance, which of course is what we're all there for. Um, it was very, very special. They, they did it a, re- a really fantastic performance, actually. We're playing the cuts from the Tchaikovsky in reverse order. We started with the part of the finale movement. Now we're going to play part of the second movement. Mm. Why don't you choose the second movement? Well, it's the best of the lot. I mean, there's just everybody loves the second movement of this piece, and they played it with such finesse and such passion. There was such depth of feeling in it, and I just everybody deserves a chance to hear what they did with it. NZSA National Youth Orchestra, part of the second movement of Tchaikovsky's uh, fifth uh, symphony played on uh, Friday night at the Michael Fowler Centre in Wellington under Richard Gill. Such an experienced person. Great to have somebody like that be able to come and spend some time, a whole week together. Yeah, it's great for the musicians that they get to really learn from him in, in such an intense fashion. 
there's so much wisdom and musical knowledge to be imparted from someone like Richard Gill and it's fine having it a few hours here and there but when you're basically living with somebody it's those little tidbits that you get that you wouldn't otherwise get that are so important for, for young developing musicians it's such a privilege and I just I think he's amazing he's not a young man anymore and and he's he's quite frail when you watch him come on he, he looked quite frail and I then, think he's just had a back operation well that's amazing I mean to, to be able to get through Tchaikovsky 5 never mind the first half and to drive those musicians and control them in the way he did he he got perfect balance from them you could hear in that passage that the strings were dominant it was a rich and full romantic sound they were never overplayed by the brass um it was a beautiful balance and he knew when to give them their head when to really let them play out as he did there and then at, at other moments he just could almost stop them in their tracks like he wanted a little bit more space in the phrase and they followed him they followed him and it was really beautiful to watch and to listen to um some of the sections you want to talk about anybody in particular yeah i have to give a mention to the double basses because double bass playing in this country seems to have transformed um, who wouldn't want to be a double bass player when you watch double bass sections now and they were they had so much fun. That was what really struck me. They enjoyed every single moment of it. All and seven of them. All seven of them. It's not a small bass section. And also he really, Richard Gill, bought passages out of the music that I hadn't really heard before. Some of it was double bass playing. Some of it was the beautiful endings of wind solos in the first movement. I remember there was one point where I just sat up and thought, I don't, I've never heard that before. That's and you've amazing. played this work, you said, dozens of dozens times. Dozens of times. And it's just, I mean, it is, of course, different playing and listening. You hear different things. Um, but I, he just created the piece fresh for me. Um, he supported soloists. The, the principal horn, of course, has a huge solo at the beginning of the second movement. But it's a demanding part, full stop. It's non-stop Tchaikovsky horn writing. And the whole section did very well, but the principal horn player, um, Richard Gill, gave him his head, let him do his thing. And if there were moments where he was sounding a bit tired, Richard was always there supporting him and saying, you can do it, keep going, you can do it. It's a real skill of a conductor, of young musicians, to know just what they need at the right time and to be able to give it to them with a nod of the head or a smile or, or a little raise of the left hand. Um, and it was it was amazing. I think it was one of the outstanding concerts of the year so far just in in terms of the sheer ebullience of it and the joy in music making and that's what we want from young musicians we want joy in music making even more than technical prowess which they have they're so technically capable it's unbelievable but they brought feeling to the music and they brought a desire to play and to play together as a unit and to make a great sound as an orchestral unit and as a fan of symphony orchestras, I don't think there's anything better than that. And, and long may it continue. It's a treasure. And I just hope they go from strength to strength because they're amazing. Rachel Hyde, thank you very much.